Good morning. Have a seat on, on a lift or in a chair. Chair is fine. Um, the props I have are, are the same ones I've been using lately. And as you've seen, sometimes we use them. Sometimes we do different things. But I have a chair, just a regular dining room chair, nothing fancy. I have my, my scarf slash yoga strap. You can use a real strap or use something you can grab from your closet. And I have a couple blocks, which you can also use a, a dictionary or a thesaurus or those piled up or those Dan Brown books. <laughs> Very yeah. thick Stephen King books probably work well as what well. also. Yes. Um, they, they couldn't hear you for a strap. You can use what? For a strap, you could use bath towels. Oh, a bath towel you can use for a strap as well. Yes. So if you're sitting on, on the floor, uh, cross your legs at the center of your shins. Take your feet underneath your knees. Take your shoulders over your hips. And before class, uh, some of us who, who entered a little bit early we were talking about the um, the experience of the two sides and how the two sides often feel quite different. And in a way, we have to have an understanding that we're, we're not going to achieve an evenness on both sides. Um, first of all, we, we, we really can't because, you know, one lung is bigger than the other and organs are on one side, others are on the other side. You know, some we have two of, some we just have one of. So it, it's not like we're truly going to get to this place of evenness on both sides. But just because we even know that we won't get there doesn't mean we don't seek it. So we seek it with the knowledge that it's an everlasting journey. That it's not a journey with a destination we arrive to, it's just a journey. So with seeking that even balance, come to the area of your sit bones, notice which sit bone has more weight on it, and adjust and see if you can create an evenness of the distribution of weight between those two sit bones. Half on your left sit bone, half on your right sit bone. Half on your right sit bone, half on your left sit bone. Notice what else you need to adjust in order to get there. Notice if you really get there or only sort of get there. And if you only sort of can get there today, if, if full even balance isn't there, I've been there, then observe that, notice that, accept that. Let the legs descend with gravity. And notice that one leg is more ready to let go and descend. There is a releasing from the top of the thighs through the knees and also a drawing back from the top of the thighs towards the abdomen. So there's a lengthening of that groin. And again, notice how one leg will often lengthen either quicker, faster, earlier, more in general than the other. And can you find an evenness, even though the legs are crossed? And can you then descend the flesh of the inner thighs so the inner thighs move from the front of the leg towards the back of the leg? And then there's the compacting of the hips drawn from the outer knee to the outer hip, drawing the femur bone, that's the big thigh bone, moving it deeper into the hip socket, and then moving those hip sockets, the outer hips, closer towards each other. And then pausing for a moment, noticing the discrepancies on the two sides. All right, well, my right hip is drawing in, my left isn't, or vice versa. One groin can really release, the other one not quite as much. Today, today's not yesterday, today's not tomorrow. And then come to a place where you feel it's optimal, that there, there's not an easiness, but a sense of ease. If there's no ease at all, take a higher lift. If there's no ease at all, take a higher lift. That's not for every day. Days, you know, are the work it out days. 
on Tuesday, we, we practiced ease. We used the chair for many of the poses. Today, we're not going to use the chair quite as much. It may come in, uh, but we are still going to practice with ease. The goal of today is not the deepest pose, although you might have the deepest pose, because often when we're in ease, that, may, that, that happens. But the goal is simply ease. Ease in the asana, ease in the pose. So maintaining that base without hardening, without creating any sort of harshness, can you find a lengthening from your hips to your armpits? And for some of us, as soon as we do that, the inner groins grip. So you have to have the, 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 this, this attention that goes to different parts of the body where the, the legs are still finding that descending, giving into gravity, letting gravity take hold, not a pushing down, but a, a letting go and a surrendering to gravity. And at the same time, then there's this lifting of the torso, a lengthening of the torso, not just a lifting, but a lifting and a lengthening. And notice where you may be hardening. Often when we first take these actions, there's a hardening. Okay, I have to get my knees down. I have to get my torso up. And then I want you to resist that hardening and find a softening. Still with maintaining or, or, or accessing that lengthening, that lengthening process. And then as Anne often talks about, as we inhale, there's that lengthening upward, and as we exhale, there's the expanding outward. And can you find an ease as you create the space within the body? And again, it's not just about length. I've said this before in other classes, it's not just that we're trying to create length. We're creating more space in the body through which the breath, prana, life force, through which the, this breath, prana can flow. So obviously if we're longer, taller, if we're wider, there's more space for the breath. That your shoulder bones move away from each other. And, and today, don't just do that one where you, you jam them back because what, what that can do, yes, it broadens the front of the, of the body, but it, it shortens the back of the body. And I want you to think about a broadening of the front of the body and a broadening of the back of the body. So you can take the shoulder bones from the crook of the neck, lengthen out through the shoulders and move the shoulders away from each other so that there's a broadening of both the front and back body. The difficulty are, are, are that we have with that, and certainly our ego may have with that, is you don't get that huge broad expansion of the chest. But we do get an expansive an, expanse, an expansion of the chest as well as an expansion of the back. We want to begin to include both, not just focusing on one part of the body, bringing one part of the body to, max, to the maximum while ignoring another part of the body. Soften the sides of the neck as you lift your ears away from your hips. Bring your palms together at your chest. Notice if you've begun to lean forward or back and seek to adjust. Close your eyes from top to bottom, draw your eyes back and down to gaze at the seat of your heart, the seat of your soul. And then do a check-in with yourself from bottom to top, from top to bottom, check in. And you can certainly adjust, but then ask what will create more ease in this pose for me. Not more lift, not more open, not more expansion, not more any of that. You've done that. Now what will create more ease? And it may be more lift, more expansion. It may be one of those, but that's not the question. The question is what will create more ease right now in this moment?
And let's chant the syllable on three times together. Exhaling completely. Deep inhalation. Oh. Taking a moment to check in with yourself before you rush off to the next movements. Be here. We're not going anywhere. We're not getting there. We're going here. Ensure that the sternum stays nice and lifted. Lower your chin towards your heart. A broadening both across the chest as the chest rises, also across the top of the back as the shoulders move away from each other with ease. And releasing your hands onto your thighs with your palms up. With your eyes closed, raise your head. From the back of your head, gently let your eyelids open. Straighten your legs. Take your hands by your hips. Be at the edge of, of your lift. Uh, so your buttocks are on the lift, thighs are off the lift. And again, you can use blank. I have blankets here, but you can use towels, you can use Pillows, firmer pillows are better, but you know, soft pillows are all you have and soft pillows are all you have. It helps, you saw me rock back and forth a little bit. It helps to pull the flesh away from the sit bones and you can feel your sit bones a little bit more firmly and the sit bones begin to move away from each other. And from there, can you find an evenness of the sit bones? So again, many of us will find that we have more weight on one sit bone than the other. And when our legs were crossed, we often go, well, it's because our legs are crossed. How can they be 100% even with the legs crossed? But now we are in a symmetrical pose and we find the same thing. So what do you need to do to make that adjustment? And first we go after the big actions, you know, move this, move that. But often it's in the more subtle actions. And it takes some studying to figure out, I can't truly give you the instruction because it's different for each person. The thigh bones press down. So picture the top of the thigh bones. Imagine there's a huge weight right at the very top where the thigh bone is, is, is meeting the body and that's pressing down. Don't confuse that with the knees pressing down. And then find a lengthening from the tops of the thighs out through the knee, through the heel, but also from the tops of the thighs back towards the abdomen. And the flesh of the inner thighs releasing down, draw from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact the hips together. Elbows are, are bent right now. See the front bottom ribs draw towards the back body and using the hands, I don't care if the arm's straight, but using the hands, keeping the legs where they are, push into the hands and finding a lengthening through the side ribs. The arms may or may not straighten. Don't force them straight, that's the ego working. And can you find a sense of ease now in this pose? Can you find a sense of, of evenness with the ease? And I can sense one leg is working much harder than the other. 
right, my left thigh knows how to press down. Right? I'm, I'll, I'll point not mirroring. So this is what I'm calling my left thigh. You're right. So that knows how to press down, but this one still 20 years doing this and it's still not evening out. So I have to do two things. One is, well, maybe I do have something in here and I can press down a little bit more. Okay, I have that, still not quite even. I have to then do less on the other leg. Because if I keep going maximum on the leg that knows how to work, this other leg will never catch up. So if my goal is evenness, I, I have to meet in the middle. So teach this right one how to press down while the left one might ease up a little bit to meet the right one. What do you need to do? That's what I needed to do. What do you need to do to find a sense of evenness, but then more importantly, a sense of ease? And again, as we do this, even in this pose, there's a tendency, and we give the instruction, right? Take the elbows towards each other, it's fine. Take them towards each other, but then we're only broadening the front body. Can you seek a broadening of the front and back bodies. Don't just move the elbows away from each other to do that, but move the shoulders away from each other. And allow the breath as it flows into the body to touch both the front body and the back body equally. So it's not just filling up the chest, but it's filling up the front body. It is touching the inner chest, but it's also touching the inside of your back. Now separate your feet. See that I have little lines here with the, the floorboards. You may or may not have that, um, but, but do your best to see that your feet are in the same plane, right? So, so that from this midline, there's an evenness on the two sides, that the angle is the same. The actions then are the same. The thigh bones press down. And again, I can sense this left one knows how to press down more than this right one. So how, and that affects then the, the, the weight of the sit bones, right? So this one presses down, there's more weight on the left sit bone. So how can I teach the right one to draw in? You have to figure this out for you. It might be opposite, might be different. So how can I work the thighs, the hips, so that I get the evenness of the sit bones? The truth is you have to work all of that in order to get the sit bones. There's the lengthening of the thighs, from the inner thighs through the inner knee through the inner heel, from the inner thighs back towards the abdomen. The flesh of the inner thighs moving down and a drawing from the outer knees to the outer hips. And what do you need to do? So those are the main instructions. Now, what do you need to do both to find an, an evenness or as even as you can get today on the two sides? So one side you might want to ease into it a little bit more, not force it or maybe it's already at its max and you can't do that. And then with the side that knows how to work, you might need to ease up a little bit, not go to the maximum. And then you ask yourself, what would make this pose more easeful? Is easeful a word? What would bring me more ease in this moment? And go for that. Yes, there's a lifting up through the side ribs. Yes, you're using your arms to help you with that. But again, there's the broadening of both the front and back bodies, not just the front body, but can you widen, right? We're not doing the forward bend version. We're not doing the back bend version. There are both of those. But can you simply be here upright, shoulders over the hips with a broadening of the, both the front body and the back body? especially the top. So the, the top chest, front chest, and the, the top of the back, the chest of the back. And if at any point you find yourself grimacing, you know that you're not in a place of ease. If your tongue is pressing on the roof of your mouth, you're not in a place of ease. So you can ask, well, we'll make this more easeful. I kind of like that word if it's not a word. Full of ease. Take your hands on the inside of your knees. Pull straight up. Let the feet come together. Take your hands by your hips.
Yeah, my elbows are bent. I'm not, I'm not concerned with that part right now so much. Do press the heels towards each other. Now, often in this pose, there's a tendency to try and force the knees down, push the knees down. Do not do that. Instead, find space. If you can begin to find more space from the top of the thigh out through the knee, and even from the top of the thigh back towards the abdomen, when I draw in, my knees go out further. Think knees outward. Yes, you want the knees to, to move away from each other. When they move away from each other, there's a good chance they'll move down slightly, or more than slightly, but move the knees away from each other by lengthening these groins. And uh, I don't know if it was Tuesday or last week, we're also talking about even as the top of the thigh draws in, right? From that center, you want to move away. So the tops of the groins also move away from each other. So even as you're drawing towards the body, from the top of the thighs towards the body, from the center of the body, there's a moving away from each other. And from the top of the groins, there's a moving away from each other. Still outer knee to outer hip, compact those hips together. So the more I can draw in with the groins, as well as separate, the more I draw the outer knees to the outer hips, move the femur bone into the hip socket, the more my knees move away from each other. And by the way, some of us will never get the legs to the floor. No matter, even if your hips are as open as they will ever get, they're not going to the floor because the shape of your femur bone is different. So we all try and look at the pictures in the book and go look at that, but we're not seeing the shape of the bones and the bones have a great effect on, on, on the poses and we have different shaped bones. We're not, we're not all the same. But find an evenness so I can still sense I, am, I, I can pull my left femur bone into my hip socket, but the right femur bone still doesn't want to go there. So I adjust. Can I do it a little bit more, but also then ease up on the left one so that there's not just working harder on one side, but trying to even them out. And then let's ask what can bring me more ease in this pose? Take your hands on the outside of the knees, push the legs together. Hold behind one knee, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, drag the heel. Other leg, draw the flesh towards the buttocks, drag the heel, straighten the legs, back to Dandasana. This may feel very different right now. The actions are the same, thigh bones pressing down, the lengthening of the groins out in both directions, out through the heel, back towards the body, a widening, we didn't say that when we did, did this pose first, but a widening of the top of the groin, the outer knees to the outer hips, the descending of the flesh. So all that is there, but the experience is, is, is may be different. You check in. And release. Let's lie back. Let's try and get into the hamstrings a little bit. So you can take your, your lift off to the side. If you need something underneath your head, certainly take a lift underneath your head. Go get yourself a, a strap or scarf or as Mateo shared at the beginning of class, you can use a towel. And lie back. Keep your left leg bent, bend your right leg into your chest and put the strap around your foot where the heel meets the arch, straighten your leg, but don't straighten it completely. Have just a little bit of a bend in it. In order to, what I've discovered for me, in order to get to the hamstring, I have to release the groins first. And that's what we've been working on in those sitting poses. So this thigh bone still presses back. And, and by the way, no death grips on the strap, just a nice gentle hold here. But you do have to use your brain and get your thigh bone moving back. Notice my heel is close to, to being over my hip. I'm not trying to draw it towards my face. So press the thigh back. You want to take the outer hip with it. So the thigh moves back and the outer hip moves away from your shoulder because as soon as you take the leg up, that hip goes towards your shoulder and then the right side of your body is shorter than the left. 
So you want to keep the, the sides of your body the same length. My knee is still just a little bit bent. Now as I straighten the leg, I want you to think of, of the hamstring itself lengthening. Not, not just a, a forcing back, although the femur bone is pressing back. And, and you, you have to ease your way into it. So as you straighten the leg, the heel goes towards the ceiling, the femur bone goes towards the floor. There is an opening in the back of the knee. And from that belly of the hamstring, that center of the hamstring, can you extend outward? So from the belly of the hamstring, you're extending towards the heel. From the belly of the hamstring, you're drawing back towards the buttocks. But now you must add the, 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 the groins. So find that lengthening of the groins from the inner thigh, out through the knee, out through the heel, from the inner thigh, back towards the abdomen. The flesh of the inner thigh moving back. And even, the, the, even though one leg is bent, the top of the groin is moving away from each other. And then go after that opening of the belly of the hamstring again. From that belly, the hamstring extends upward through the heel. And from that belly, it draws down towards the buttocks. And if you feel yourself forcing, if you feel yourself grimacing, ease up. If you're in tremendous pain, ease up. The rule of thumb is an inch behind the pain. And some of you won't be, be able to straighten your leg and that's fine. You just keep your thigh perpendicular to the floor, have a little bend in your knee and just keep opening, 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 slowly, slowly, slowly. Stay an inch behind the pain, you will get so much more. You will proceed, your ego won't be quite as happy because your ego wants that pain, right? We've been taught more pain, more gain. It's, a, it's not true. You will progress more quickly if you stay an inch behind the pain. It's just your brain telling you, no, you have to feel pain to move forward. Bend your legs, switch legs. So start with just a little bit of a bend. Yes, get that thigh bone back. Take the hip with it so that the two sides of your torso are equal in length. Keep the groin soft as you go to the belly of the hamstring, that center of the hamstring, and begin to straighten the leg from there. So the, the, from the belly of the hamstring, that center of the hamstring, there's an extension up towards the heel and then there's a drawing down towards the buttocks. So you're opening the hamstring, not trying to force it, not jamming it back. Of course, if, if, if you can't straighten the leg, keep a little bent leg, do the same thing, just open as best you can. No death grips. And then re-lengthening the groins. Notice what happens to the hamstrings, if anything, for you today, when you lengthen from the inner thigh out through the underneath, through the inner heel, through the ball of the toe, from the upper inner thigh back towards the abdomen. Take the flesh of the inner thigh straight back. And, and there's also that broadening, that opening at the top of the groins, widening. And yes, draw the outer knee to the outer hip and stay an inch behind the pain. If your face is grimacing, you're not at ease. What will make this pose more easeful for you? If you ask the question, your body will tell you. Your ego may not like the answer. Do it anyway. Bend your leg, switch legs. Again, start with a little soft bend. Press the thigh back, take the hip with it. Soften the groin, keep a soft groin open from the belly of the hamstring. From the belly of the hamstring, extend upward through the heel. From the belly of the hamstring, draw down towards the buttock. Now to a straight leg. Continue the lengthening and releasing of the inner thigh. From the inner thigh, out through the inner knee, through the inner heel, through the ball of the big toe. From the inner thigh, drawing back towards the abdomen. Widening that top of the groin. Take the flesh of the inner thigh straight back. 
Now maintain that. If your leg is bent, you're, you're going to stay here. Find a place of ease. The rest of you, drag your left heel on. Actually, let's do it this way. Straighten your left leg above the floor, just a little bit above the floor. Turn your left thigh in. And then from the center of the thigh, from that belly of the thigh, take the leg down. Now lengthen both groins. So from the inner thigh, out through the inner heel, through the balls of the big toes. Draw from the inner thighs, top of the inner thighs, back towards the abdomen. Find a widening, the top of the abdomen, the, excuse me, the top of the groins moving away from each other. And take the flesh of the inner thighs from the front of the leg to the back of the leg. So the leg that's up, the thigh, the flesh moves back, the leg that's down, it moves towards the floor. Draw from your outer knees to outer hips. Still opening that, that top leg from the belly of the hamstring. In seeking, even though your legs are in different directions, they're doing different things, can you find uh, some symmetry with those two legs? That they're working equally. And then we ask, what can bring me more ease in this moment? Bend your left leg, bend your right leg. Bend your left leg into your chest, put the strap around your foot where the heel meets the arch, straighten your leg. Start with a little bend. Soften the groins, take the thigh bone back and the outer hip back. Don't turn the thigh out when you do that, the knee, the knee is pointing straight. Keeping the soft groin, open the leg from the, the belly of the hamstring. From the belly of the hamstring, extending up through the heel, from the belly of the hamstring, drawing back towards the buttocks. Continuing the, the lengthening, releasing of the groins from the inner thigh, out through the inner knee, through the inner heel, through the ball of the big toe, but also equally important from the inner thigh back towards the abdomen. The flesh of the inner thigh moving back and that widening of the top of the groin. Draw from the outer knee to the outer hip and keep opening from that belly of the hamstring. Now maintain that. Don't let the left hip move towards your shoulder when you straighten the right leg. So straighten the right leg just two, three inches above the mat. Turn the thigh in. From that same belly of the thigh, place the leg down. And then lengthen both groins, inner thighs, inner knees, inner heels, through the ball of the toes. From the tops of the inner thighs, back towards the abdomen, widen the, the top of the groins. The flesh of the inner thighs moving from the front of the leg to the back of the leg, drawing from your outer knees to outer hips. Even though the legs are doing different things, find a similarity in their work. Opening from the belly of the hamstring. And then bend your leg, legs on the floor, strap to the side, roll to the right, and push to come up, come up into Tadasana, feet together. If feet apart is more comfortable for you, certainly take feet apart. It's not about the feet being together. Whatever's going to give you more ease today. And, and it, we often say, and this is how Bikaya Sangha taught, um, that Tadasana is in every single pose we do. That actually Tadasana and Shavasana are in every single pose we do. But I'm beginning to think also that it's the reverse. That every single pose we do can be reflected in Tadasana. So can you take the poses that we've done so far, the sitting poses, the lengthening of the groins, the outer knees, the outer hips, the compacting of the hips, the lengthening of, of the, the hamstrings. Can you bring 
everything we've done so far into this pose of Tadasana. Of course, that's a balancing evenly on the feet, right? Just like we would balance evenly on the sit bones. And what do you need to adjust? You might find you need to adjust the same exact things as you adjusted when you were sitting. I still have to draw this right, I'm pointing to my right now, and it's confusing when we're mirroring, uh, but I'm drawing that femur bone into the hip socket. When I do that, I can get a balance of the feet. It's the same, same thing. Now that's not necessarily what, what's going on for you, but what is going on for you? Can you find the length into the groins, the flesh of the inner thigh is moving back? Finding a lengthening through the side ribs. You don't have the hands to push down, but can you imagine, take your hands like I have them by my hips and imagine there is something there. You're pushing air, I get that, but push down to lift up through the side ribs. Isn't it amazing what the imagination does? I can get more lift when I do that. There's nothing there I'm pressing. It's all in my mind. And then take your hands back to Tadasana. And again, finding as you move the shoulder bones away from each other, finding a broadening of both the front body and the back body. And sometimes when we do this, we make these adjustments, we find a, a, a harshness. So where are you being harsh to yourself? Where is there a hardening? And while maintaining what you've created, maintaining this lift, Tadasana, mountain pose, and maintaining this, this feeling of, of um, stability, or, or for me, there's a, certainly a fluidness in the stability. Can you remove the harshness and, and bring a sense of ease? And then become a witness to how the breath flows through your body. And then seeking to maintain that ease, bring your fingertips up by your chest, bend your legs, maintain the ease, jump or step your feet apart. So wide stance with your feet underneath your hands. Drop the shoulders away from your ears, hold your arms up from your armpits. But of course we need to go back to the base so you balance evenly on your feet. It is fascinating for me. And when I say that, I, I, I'm just sharing, I'm not saying you need to be me, but I, I, I'm sharing the internal dialogue that can take place for you and your body, right? Because we're not in front of each other and I'm not getting the immediate feedback from you. So for me, I'm noticing the same things as when I was sitting, this hip is up, which then puts more weight there. So I have to draw in. And then I can find an evenness. So what is it for you? It's probably not that. Your body is not mine, but there is something there which you can go inward and study. The thigh bones press back. Well, my left one moved right away. The right one took its good old time. So let me, how can I move that back? and maybe even ease up on the left one so that there's a sense of evenness. Lengthening the groins from the inner knees all the way up through the lower abdomen, the flesh of the inner thighs moving back. We'll go to Vira Brajasana 2 today first. We'll go to the right, turn your left foot in, turn your right leg up. Adjust so that your front heel is in line with your back arch. Press the outer rim of the back heel down Turn the front thigh from the inside out, lift both outer knees to outer hips. So still getting that stability. And still noticing the front one will do it, this one isn't. So how can I bring more awareness, but awareness with ease into that part of my body that still does not quite have the intelligence? Now reach through your back arm and bend your front leg. And then we'll come straight up. Reach through your back arm, lift yourself up. Reach through your back arm, bend your front leg. Reach through your back arm. Now resist with your right, with the front arm. That front arm wants to pull you, come up. So both arms are actually extending away. Exhale, come down. Keep pressing to the back heel. Find a sense of ease. Inhale, come up. Now we're going to stay. So resist with your back arm, press the back heel, and ease your way into it. Ease your way into it. 
Knee over your ankle, thigh parallel to the floor. Ease your way into it. You can look over your front fingertips if you'd like or look straight ahead. Lengthen both groins. Draw both outer knees to outer hips. Drop the shoulders, hold your arms up from your armpits. And then ask, what will make this pose more easeful for me today, right now? And then do that. When I asked that, I didn't even need to do anything. The top of my back just dropped down. Reach through the back arm, come up, parallel your feet. Over to the other side, right foot and left leg out. Front heel in line with your back arch. Press the back heel, turn the front thigh from the inside out so that your knee is in line with the top of your foot. Lift both outer knees to outer hips, compact those hips together. And then again, bending that front leg. Reach that back arm as you do so. Inhale, come up. We're seeking ease right now. Reach for the back arm, bend the front leg. When you come up, resist with the front arm. Both arms extended. One more time, inhale going down, exhale going down. Inhale, coming up, find some ease. Now we're going to stay. Reach for the back arm, press the back heel, come down. Knee over your ankle, thigh parallel to the floor. You can gaze over your front fingertips if you'd like, or just look straight ahead. Lengthen the groins, right? So there's that, from the top of the thigh, there's a length and especially that, that, that front leg, there's a lengthen out, but both legs draw back into the body. Find that compactness, outer knees to outer hips. And what will make this pose more easeful for you? Reach through your back arm, straighten your leg, parallel your feet. Jump or step your feet together. Now I can't see everybody, and, and honestly the pictures I see are, are, are fairly small, but watch for a second. One thing that, that it appears that some of you are doing, and it's natural, when we come down, we begin to take the torso forward, right? We wanna go over there. But remember, we don't wanna go there, we wanna go here. So when you come down, maybe we'll start with hands on hips. I want you to think of, of not so much bending the leg, I want you to think of dropping the buttock down. So, the right buttock will drop straight down and notice the torso. Not, it's just floating in space. The spine is perpendicular. I'm not doing anything to the torso. The buttock drops and the torso just floats in space. Okay, so let's try that. So from Tadasana, fingertips up, bend your legs, jump or step wide. Take your hands on your hips. Now do the adjustments here, right? Same as we did before. So thigh bones back, outer knees to outer hips. Oh, come on, nicely, don't, don't hit it. That was not a hit, that was just a waking up and a gentle loving. Draw those outer knees to outer hips, find that evenness, the lengthening of the groins, and then turn your left foot in, right leg out. Take your front heel in line with your back arch, and then those actions again. It helps to press that back heel. It helps to take the back thigh back. From the hip, then press the back heel. But there's also that action of the outer knee to the outer hip. So it's a two-way street. The front thigh turns out, outer knee to outer hip. So we'll, we'll go up and down or down and up a, a, a few times. Now remember, when we come down, there's the buttock is dropping. The knee, it bends because that's the only way to get the buttock to drop. But I don't want you to think of it as bending the knee and I want your torso to stay perpendicular to the floor and it just floats in space. So as you press the back heel now, drop the buttock down. Keep pressing the back heel, then come back up. Exhale, drop the buttock down. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, drop the buttock down. Inhale, come back up, find a sense of ease. Exhale, drop the buttock down, we'll stay here. Knee over the ankle, thigh parallel to the floor. Keep this back thigh going back, press the back heel. Lengthen the groins, draw the top of the groins into the body. Draw from the outer knees to the outer hips, compact those hips together. Now, so often we say elbows back. Take the elbows away from each other so you're opening the front and back sides of the body. And then extend the arms, drop the shoulders, 
And from the front and back side of the body, from the midline, extend outward. If it's comfortable, gaze over your front fingertips. What will make this pose more easeful for you? I've given you all of my instructions. What instruction do you need to give you? And reach through both arms, inhale, come up. Parallel your feet, take your hands on your hips, take a breath. Turn your right foot and turn your left leg out. Front heel in line with your back arch. The back thigh does go back. That helps press the back heel, but there's, it's a two-way street, so draw from the outer knee to the outer hip, even as you press from the hip into the heel. Turn the front thigh out. Lift the outer knee to the outer hip. Now again, keep your spine perpendicular to the floor. We're only dropping the buttock down. The knee bends because the buttock drops. Inhale, on your exhalation, press the back heel, drop the buttock, the spine, the torso just floats. Inhale, come up. Exhale, bend the leg, knee over the ankle, thigh parallel to the floor. Inhale, come up. Don't let the torso come forward. The torso just floats. All you're doing is dropping the buttock. All your awareness is on that buttock. Inhale, come up. I lost count. Let's do it one more time. Bend the leg, we'll come back up. Torso just floats. I'm sorry, I say even said it wrong, so now I need to do it one more time. We're not bending the leg, we're dropping the buttock. Drop the buttock. Inhale, come up. And then one last time, drop the buttock. Lengthen the groins. Spread the groins, outer knees to outer hips. Now take the elbows away from each other, not just back, but away from each other so that both the front and back body spread and then extend the arms from there, drop the shoulders. Extend from the mid, midline of both the front and back bodies out through the arms. And if it's comfortable, you can gaze over the front fingertips. Don't do it for your ego, do it for the body. And what will make this pose more easeful for you? Reach through both arms as you straighten the leg, parallel your feet. Jump or step your feet together. Then separate your feet. Hip distance apart can even be a little bit wider. Extend the arms forward, arms up. Hold your elbows. All right, so can you see how I'm holding my elbows here? Hold your elbows, extend up. We're coming into a forward bend. Inhale, exhale, come forward. So now we're back at the hamstrings but you have to lengthen the groins in order to really access it. So lengthen from your inner knee up through to the lower abdomen. Take the flesh of the tops of the thighs straight back. Lift the outer knees to the outer hips. Open the belly of that hamstring. The thigh bone moves back. Open that belly of the hamstring. And let your arms go, take your fingertips on the floor, take your hands on your hips, extend your chest forward. Inhale, come up and take your feet together, Tadasana. Take a, a if you have um, a couple of blocks, you can also use one block and move back and forth or your, your dictionary or even, even a chair. You can, you can even use a chair for that. So you can take your dining room chair. It's a little higher of a lift, but quite nice um, sometimes. So something that you'll end up putting your hand on. And just step your feet apart. It's the wide stance. We're doing uh, Uchita Parjvo Konasana, extended side angle pose. So here, my, my feet are wide, and I still am noticing some of the, the, these issues. The difference between my practice now, right? You'd think, okay, 20 years, some of this has been figured out. But the difference between now and 10 years ago that I was just doing this, but still not noticing the discrepancies. Now, I just notice it right away. Okay, there it is, it's out. I can fix it right away. 
but do press the thighs back, outer knees to outer hips, lengthen those inner thighs, the inner groins, take the flesh of the inner thighs straight back. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out, front heel in line with back arch, and take your, your block or, or whatever you have, or your chair or your setup, and move it right to the outer rim of that heel. Press the outer rim of the back heel, turn the front thigh, lift both outer knees to outer hips. We're gonna start off in Virabhadrasana two, arms at, arms at the hips. So you're just dropping the buttock down. Just drop the buttock down. Now extend the arm. So here we are in Virabhadrasana two. Reach to the back arm, inhale. On your exhalation, take your hand onto the block. Extend your left arm up, rotate the arm. And now really press into that back heel. So the back thigh moves back, press into the back heel and rotate the torso as you extend the arm overhead. Rotate the torso towards the ceiling, I should say. Lengthen the groins, draw the outer knees to the outer hips. Now what will give you more ease in this pose? Reach through the arm, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet, over to the other side, right foot and left leg out. Now I'm using a high block, I didn't say that. You can use what you want, but today a high block is more, brings you more ease than the lower block. You can also, if, if that seems too low and a chair seems too high and you have two blocks or a block in a couple books, right? There's also, if you can see this set up here, you know, and, and this could be a, a stack of books with a block on top of it, okay? So play with your setup to see what might bring you more ease. So hands on hips, press that back heel. So the back thigh has to go back, turn the front thigh out, outer knees to outer hips. And yes, lengthen those groins, draw the top of the thighs, top of the groins into the body. Now keep pressing that back heel with the thigh going back and just drop the buttocks down. Drop the buttocks down. The spine floats right now. Now extend the arms. Reach through the back arm. Inhale. Exhale. Hand on the block. Right arm. Oh, what arm is this? Right arm goes up. Rotate the body. Reach up and extend. Rotate the torso as you extend over your ear. Lengthen the groins. Draw the outer knees to the outer hips. What will bring you more ease? Then reach for the arm, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet, jump or step your feet together. And the blocks may end up being in the way, so I always readjust the blocks so when I separate my feet, I don't trip over them. Let's do it one more time. Fingertips up. Just step your feet apart so you don't trip on your, your blocks or whatever's there. Turn your left foot in, turn your right leg out. Front heel in line with your back arch. The back thigh moving back to press the heel, but still the outer knee drawing to the outer head. Turn the front thigh out, lift that outer knee to the outer head. Arms are out. The buttock will drop. Just drop the buttock down. Inhale, exhale, drop the buttock down. Inhale, resist with the back arm. Exhale, hand on the block. The block goes right next to your heel. Extend the arm up, rotate the arm, and then rotate the torso towards the ceiling as you extend the arm overhead. Press the back heel, reach through the arm. From the arm, press the back, from, from the fingertips, reach and press through the back heel. Lengthen the groins as you draw the outer knees to the outer hips. Now, for a moment, work maximum. Get whatever you can get out of this or give whatever you can give into this and then pull back. Don't maintain maximum. Pull back to a state of ease. You will often get more pulling back from your maximum, being in a state of ease, than always going to your max. Reach through the arm, pull yourself up and out. 
parallel your feet. Take your hands on your hips, take a breath. And what you'll notice over time is that your maximum changes if you don't always go to your maximum because your body stops fighting you. Turn your right foot in, turn your left leg out. Front heel in line with your back arch, back thigh pressing back. From the hip, press the back heel, then draw back from the outer knee to the outer hip. Maintain that. Turn the front thigh out, lift the outer knee to the outer hip. Compact both hips together. Extend the arms. Reach through the back arm, pressing the back heel. Drop the buttock. It's not about bending legs, it's about dropping the buttock down. Inhale, resist with the back arm. Exhale, hand on the block, move that to your heel. Reach up, rotate the arm, turn the torso towards the ceiling as you extend toward, extend your arm overhead. Now, as much length as you can from your heel through your fingertips, from your fingertips through your heel. Lengthen the groins, outer knees to outer hips. Give it your max, everything you've got, and then pull back. Pull back to a state of ease. You can be here longer also if you find a state of ease. When you're here longer, it has an organic effect on the body. It's no longer just a physical movement, a physical practice. It's an organic practice. Reach through the arm, pull yourself up and out. Parallel your feet. Jump or step your feet together. Tadasana. Now, before we said, Tadasana is in every pose, but every pose is in Tadasana. How can you bring those poses into your Tadasana? We just did a lot of lengthening on the side body. Can you bring that into this Tadasana, along with what we were working on before, the even balance, the lengthening of the groins, the compacting of the hips? Or what is it that you experience? What did you experience in those poses? The steadiness of Virabhadrasana 2, the lengthening of, of Utita Parjva Konasana, extended side angle pose. What from those poses can you bring into your Tadasana? And release. I want you to lie back. You don't have to have a blanket for this, but I kind of like it. So if you have a blanket or a towel, just set that flat. Um, and you know what? If you have a strap, take that too, though you don't need it. What? Watch the screen for a minute so you know where I'm going with this. Head and shoulders on the blanket. I'll say that again, because I can't see you and someone often misunderstands. Head and shoulders on the blanket. The feet are close-ish to the hips, but not so much that it bothers your knees. If you need to be a little further away, you're further away. This strap is going to go between your, your heels and your hips. Then you'll rotate your upper arms out so you do get an opening in the chest. And then you press into your heels to lift your buttocks. Now most of us end up stopping here, but I want you to continue. There's a lengthening of the groins from the knees all the way over, even the tops of thighs all the way over towards the abdomen and it reflects into the chest. There's a tendency to push these ribs out. So I want you to draw the ribs back into the body and bring the chest closer to your chin. And then you take this, this strap and you extend your arms away from your shoulders. Chatush Padasana, or sometimes it's called a version of Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, whatever you want to call it, that's fine. All right, so now your turn, we'll do it together. Lie back, head and shoulders on the blanket. Take your, your strap and you kind of need to somehow, you know, I, I have to lift my buttocks up to get it there and that's fine. Then you put your buttocks down. It's between your hips and your buttocks. The heels are close-ish yet, close -ish to your buttocks, but not so far that you will create dis-ease for yourself. We're seeking to create ease. 
So first, do roll the shoulders out. This is a back bend, there is an opening in the chest. We're not looking to close the back, but, but there is more of an opening in the, in the chest here. Take hold of your strap. Now press into your heels and begin to lift your buttocks and hips up. And often there's this place where we naturally stop. And I want you to seek to take those hips a little higher by lengthening from the inner knees over the inner thighs all the way towards the abdomen. And some of you will notice that that reflects all the way into the chest. The tops of the thighs also lengthening and lengthening. And yes, I didn't say it, there is the drawing from the outer knees to the outer hips to pack the hips together. There's a tendency for the knees to move away from each other. So take the flesh of the inner thighs straight down even as you lift the hips up to keep the knees in line with your hips. And now take hold of that strap and from your inner armpit, extend through the inner arm as you press your outer shoulders down. Now I can even feel it. My front ribs are protruding forward. So I'm going to take those front bottom ribs towards the back body. And that actually gives more space for the chest to come towards the chin and therefore more space for the breath to flow. And now I have a soft diaphragm instead of a hardened diaphragm. You can also, as you extend your arms through that strap, press your hands down into the floor also can help you get a nice lift. The heels and the outer shoulders are the base of the pose. Not a lot of pressure on the head. And then we'll come out from the top of the spine to the base of the spine. Take your sit bones towards your heels and take a breath here. Maybe two or three breaths. And then we'll come back up again. So prepare yourself, roll your shoulders under, adjust your heels closest to your buttocks if they moved, push into the heels, begin to lift the hips up, press the outer shoulders down as well. Do not press the back of the head down. Lengthen through the inner groins, from the inner knees all the way, over through the lower abdomen, over the whole body. The flesh of the inner thighs moving down, outer knees to outer hips. It's the same work of the legs that we've been doing. Take the front bottom ribs towards the back body as you move the chest towards the chin. Do not confuse moving the chest towards the chin with moving the chin towards the chest. The chin does not move towards the chest. And then maintaining that, take hold of the strap from the inner armpit, extend through the inner arms, outer shoulders still pressing down, knees not moving away from each other, inner thighs pressing down, and then press your hands into the floor. The head itself should be very light. Soft jaw, soft throat. And coming down from the top of the spine to the base of the spine, sit bones towards your heels. And just because my teacher taught me back bends in sets of three, I will teach you back bends in sets of three. Press your outer shoulders down, press your center heel down, Begin to lift that buttocks up. From your inner knee, lengthen from the inner thigh all the way over the lower abdomen, all the way up over to the chest. The flesh of the upper thighs moves down. Outer knees to outer hips. Press the center heels, press the outer shoulders. Take the front bottom ribs towards the back body so that the chest can move towards the chin. Now extend through those inner arms as you push the hands down. You can even use that strap, pull the arms apart as you push them down. Extend through that inner arm, the hands moving away from the shoulders. Find a soft breath. Now, work maximum, go to your maximum, give it everything you got and then pull back an inch. Or whatever it is that brings you to a place of ease. And be here in a place of ease. On your exhalation, come down, top of the spine to the base of the spine. Remove the strap. Roll to the right. Come up. Let's move the blanket. Let's take one downward facing dog. You can use a chair or blocks for your downward facing dog. Press the ball of the first finger thumb, rotate the upper arms out. Turn your toes under, straighten your legs. Inhale, exhale, come into the pose. 
thigh bones back, lengthen the groins, outer knees to outer hips, flesh of the inner thighs moving back, lengthen the arms, lengthen the legs. Work to your maximum and then pull back and find a place of ease. Find a place of ease. And look up, walk your feet forward. Come into Tadasana. Feet can be together or apart. You don't have to turn towards the camera, you can. Just be in Tadasana. Every pose we've done today, can you bring into your Tadasana? The back bend we just did. Downward facing dog. The extending of the sides we did earlier. Can you feel every single pose in your Tadasana? And how can you make this Tadasana more easeful? And release. Take a blanket for your head. It can be flat. For most people, this one works best. Some of us have to fold it in half. That's fine. I'm one of those people. I generally fold it in half. Lie back. Let's bend your legs into your chest for a moment. Give yourself a little hug. It's a beautiful opportunity to say something kind to yourself, something loving to yourself. And on your inhalation, take your feet to the floor. Take your hands to the top of the buttocks and scoop the flesh of the buttocks towards the heels. Drag one heel on the floor, straighten the leg. Drag the other heel on the floor, straighten the leg. Let your legs go. Now we're normally told to bring those shoulders under. So you can do that. Roll the shoulders under so the chest opens. But remember, the back body is just as important. So now take your arms around you and give yourself a little hug and pull the shoulder blades away from each other. And now let's do that one more time. Roll the shoulders under, and then cross your arms the opposite way as you give yourself a hug and move those shoulder blades away from each other. And then find a comfortable place for your arms and find a spreading of both the front and the back bodies. Come to a place of neutral where the front and back bodies both spread, arms resting comfortably. Let go. Well, what does letting go mean? And we spoke about this last week. For some of you, those of you that were here. Letting go is, it sounds like it's an action that we can take. Like we let go of a rope, right? We would open up our hands and the rope would fall. But letting go in this sense is not an action. It's not an activity. It's an accepting. It's an allowing. It's an allowing for a release of what does not need to be there but you can't just let that go. You have to allow it to go. We tend to hold on to things. You have to allow it to happen. You can't send it out on its own, but it will, it will leave if you, if you can move yourself out of the way, so to speak. So can you find a place of acceptance for this moment, the pleasant and the unpleasant? And instead of trying so hard to create something, even if it's a state of ease, can you stop trying so hard and simply begin to watch, get out of the way so that the release and the ease can take place on its own?
I've said this before that that peacefulness does not come from trying to control all the things in your world. That's what we're taught to do. Work hard enough, you can control it, control it, you'll be happy. But we've all tried it, it doesn't work. We know that it doesn't work, that part's been proven. Some of us are still trying it because we think that if we try it long enough, then it will work. It doesn't work. Peacefulness comes from surrendering to this present moment. Embracing the pleasant and the unpleasant as it comes to you as is here. And not so much creating a sense of ease, but allowing that sense of ease to be here. All the peace you've ever wanted to experience is inside of you right now. All you need to do is allow it to rise to the surface and witness it. Shavasana. Deepen the inhalation, lengthen the exhalation. Wiggle your toes, wiggle your nose. Bend your legs, place your feet on the floor with your knees together, feet apart. Take your hands onto your abdomen or onto your chest. Let the healing energy of your hands penetrate your body, pierce through your layers and heal. Whatever it is you may need healing with today. Whenever you feel ready, extend your right arm past your right ear, roll to the right side. Of course, if the left side is easier, roll to the left side. Whenever you feel ready, turn your torso towards the floor first, then push to come up. Come up chest first, head last. Come up to sitting. Find a, a position of relative ease. It can be in a chair, it can be on the floor. It can be on a lift. I have, I have my lift here. Palms together. Just 
Draw your eyes back and down as you turn the corners of your lips up. Experience the effects of the practice in your pose here. Bring a sense of ease throughout the rest of your day. Don't leave it behind, don't leave it on the mat, take it with you. Take it into your interactions with other people, with kindness, with compassion, kindness and compassion for others, kindness and compassion for yourself. Let's close our practice together by chanting one collective OM, deep inhalation, Oh. Jenny, let your eyes open. Big smile. Namaste. Bow to the divine within you. Well, thank you, everyone. Jonathan, uh, the Tuesday I was asking the question, I want to show you exactly, I don't know how, uh, what's the problem with my camera, how, what to do with this one. You can see me, but not my hands, right? Okay, so you said see. that press here, or these press, right here. Now, this is the ball of the thumb right there. And this is the ball of the first finger. Oh, these here. Two spots, just two spots, pinpoint them. Okay. Follow the, thumb, follow the first finger. Make sense? Okay, like this. Yeah, You're drawing like a line. I'm saying here and here. Okay. Here and here. Don't draw that line. Just here. Okay. Here. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Notice what you're doing. Look at my <laughs> hand. Look at what you're doing. You're doing this. Don't do yeah. that. Don't throw the fingers back. Okay, keep the fingers straight, spreading, okay? We don't want to do this with our hands. Okay. Okay? All right. Anybody else? Okay. Any, did I unmute people? Here, let me unmute. Uh, anybody else? Any questions? Great class, John. Thank oh, you, Jonathan. Good. good, good. And I think Ramona already left, but she has a book out. Ramona has a book out. Um, so we did a little unveiling the other day on, on her book on, on Facebook. So um, check out, check out, let's see if I have it over here. Incline, Incline Elders, uh, how to rebrand aging for self and society. So I know she, she interviewed uh, Adith uh, and me and a bunch of members of the studio and as well as uh, tons of other people. So uh, her mission is to rebrand aging in our world. So, um, Read it, it both supports her, and there's some great stuff in here. All right, anybody else, any questions? All right, then love to all of you. Thank you so much for being here. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh.